Good morning and welcome to worship with the Forest Grove United Church of Christ. Welcome into the joy of the Spirit and the open, loving arms of God. Welcome to this place where we are growing in the wisdom and love of Jesus. Where we are on a journey toward liberation and welcoming a just world for all. Where because of who you are and where you are on your life's journey, we know we have so much to learn from you. And so we greet you as God's beloved and say to you, the light of Christ in us sees and celebrates the light of Christ in you. Welcome to the sacred hour of worship. Dear friends, good morning to you. And I want to wish us a happy Mother's Day. And as we prepare ourselves for worship, first I want to invite us to allow ourselves to be completely relaxed. Part of one of the benefits perhaps of uh, being able to worship together from our homes is that we can be on comfy chairs and we can feel completely settled and at home. And at this time, as we prepare ourselves for worship, as we light our peace candle, I want to invite us to feel completely at home in the spirit and in the presence of God. So I invite us to feel our feet on the ground. Maybe you can embrace yourself. Whatever you need to do to feel completely at ease and at home in your body, and at home in the spirit. I invite you to do that. And on this Mother's Day, I invite us to hear these words of Julian of Nor Norwich, the 13th century mystic who describes Christ as the mother. And let's take three deep breaths together, arriving in that womb of being and becoming, feeling held in that greater life. As we listen to these words of the mystic Julian of Norwich, she writes, our mother in nature or mother in grace, Christ is our mother in nature or our mother in grace, because he wanted all together to become our mother in all things, made the foundation of his work most humbly and most mildly in the mother's womb. The mother's service is nearest, readiest, and surest. Nearest because it is most natural, readiest because it is most loving, and surest because it is truest. No one ever might or could perform this office most fully as Jesus. We know that all our mothers bear us for pain and for death. Oh, what is that? But our mother Jesus bears us for joy and for endless life. He carries us within him in love and travail until the full time when he, he suffered the sharpest thorns and cruelest pains and at last died. The mother lays her child tenderly to her breast, and our tender mother, Jesus, leads us easily into his blessed breast through his open side, and shows us there a part of the Godhead and the joys of heaven with inner certainty of endless bliss. This fair, lovely word, mother, is so sweet and so kind in itself that it cannot truly be said of anyone or to anyone except of him and to him who is the mother of life and of all things. And so as we gather for worship, we light our peace candle, invoking the presence of Christ, who is the mother of all things.
Amen. Dear friends, I invite us, as we come to a time of prayer, to lift up prayers for Tom Wallsteed and his family, our neighbor and our friend and our community member, Tom, passed away on Friday, April 30th. And so we lift up prayers for his daughter in Missouri and his sister, who is in Las Vegas, and we wrap them in our prayers of comfort and peace, and we give thanks for Tom's life. I want to lift up prayers of joy for Renee Mills, whose daughter Kat and husband Chris gave birth to Renee's grandson, Oliver, on Friday, April 30th. So welcome to this world, Oliver, and we share in, in Renee's joy at this time. And we also share in Lily Mullen's joy. Lily Mullen was accepted to college at Seattle Highline Community College. Lily says this is her dream college, so we're, we give thanks for this joy and we, we celebrate with Lily and Mary. And on this Mother's Day, I want to also lift up prayers for Sandra Ortiz. I heard a, a story on the news, uh, sort of what's something, to lift up something that's going on in our wider world this morning. Sandra Ortiz uh, was reunited with her son, Brian, after three years of being separated at, at the border uh, by Customs and Border Patrol. Three years ago in 2015, uh, according to Sandra's report, she said Customs and Border Patrol said to her, say goodbye to your son because you'll never see him again. And she worked tirelessly to be reunited with her son. Uh, and so we give thanks for uh, Sandra's, the, the tireless love of a mother uh, and the resilient, strong love of a mother that we, we, le we learn from Sandra. Um, and we pray that more families uh, are reunited. And we pray for Sandra and Brian's healing. And we pray for a spirit of love. I invite us to pray for a spirit of love and justice to rise in all people everywhere that we together cast off the systems of violence that separate mothers from their children. Let us pray. Great Mother, wisdom enfleshed among us and spirit of life, we give you praise and we light up in our hearts in the warm embrace of your divine love that holds and connects all things together. We give thanks for all mothers everywhere, mothers with two legs and four legs, mothers with fins or with fur, and, and with wings. In all the ways we are brought to life and taught to live by mothers, we see you, O oh God, and we give you praise. For mothers who adopt or give birth, 
we give thanks for the pain and heartbreak that all mothers endure for us and for the patience and love that they show to us. We give thanks for those who participate in mothering without even knowing that that's what they're doing. We give thanks and we see them and we see you in them, O oh God. Make us all mothers in our hearts that we might reflect your divine image so we can nurture ourselves and each other into being more loving, more compassionate, more life-giving, so we can labor together into greater strength and resilience with you, O oh God, O oh Great Mother, together giving birth to a transformed and better world. And in the face of death, call forth and deliver a greater life unfolding. We ask this in the name of Christ, our mother, our Sophia wisdom and fleshed, who teaches us how to pray, saying creative power, grandfather, universal mother in whom is heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um. Hello? Uh, there we go. Scripture 1, John 5, 1 and 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey his commandments, for the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the, no one, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood, and the Spirit is the one that testifies for the spirit is the truth. Beautiful job reading, Jimmy. Thank you so much. We could hear you loud and clear. And I want to uh, lift up this morning how in our in the scripture we just heard uh, we hear that whoever loves the parent loves the child. And so this morning on Mother's Day, we are going to focus on the parent. We who love Jesus, the child of God, are going to focus on the parent. And as we continue our series on the feminine faces of God, this morning we will celebrate the mother as one of the many feminine faces of God. The scripture we just heard Jimmy Reed speaks of being born of God, being born of a greater life and a greater love that is even stronger than death. And we heard from Julian of Norwich already during the lighting of the peace candle. I, want, I invite us to hear the words of the 13th century mystic Marguerite of Wain, uh, who speaks of Christ giving birth Christ giving birth to a new and renew wor renewed world through love. She describes and compares Christ's passion to being in labor. She, says, she asks the question, Jesus, are you not my mother? Are you not even more than my mother? My human mother, after all, labored in giving birth to me for only a day or a night. You, my tender and beautiful Jesus, labored for me for over 30 years. 
Oh, with what measureless love you labored for me. But when the time was ripe for you to be delivered, your labor pains were such that your sweat was like great drops of blood that ran from your body to the earth. Whoever saw a mother endure such a birth? When the time of your delivery came, you were nailed to the bed of the cross, and your nerves and all veins were broken. How could anyone be surprised that your veins broke open when in one day you gave birth to an entirely new world? And so the mystic Julian of Norwich also refers to Christ as mother. They were both 13th century, in the, from the 13th century, and it's an example of where we see uh, the feminine face of God as mother show up in Christian tradition. Norwich explains how Christ entered the world through a mother's womb and how God's motherly love was revealed to us in Christ's saving acts of death and resurrection. And women, particularly mothers, perhaps, understand this kind of love that is revealed through death and resurrection in their bones and in their bodies. And we don't hear their voices enough. There are many ways to mother and to be a mother, but we rarely get to hear the narratives and the stories from mothers of what it was like to give birth and to deliver life into the world. And this is how life and this is how God enters the world. So we honor how love gives birth to a new world and through the labor of death and resur resurrection as we celebrate and honors mother, honor Mother's Day. As we do that, I invite us to hear these stories from some of our mothers in our community. And as we hear their stories and in their stories, I invite us to see the face of God's love for all of us. And so I'd like to, I'd like to turn it over to our mothers now as we hear these stories, these sacred narratives of bringing life into the world. Good morning. Um, nervous wreck, but here it goes. As some of you know, I'm an obsessive planner and wanted to be a mother from as early as I can remember. It seemed like I had to wait a long time, but when we were ready, I conceived baby number one easily. Then I threw myself wholeheartedly into birthing classes, nursery prep, maternity clothes, a healthy diet, the pregnancy vitamins, all of it. Jen's first movements felt like butterfly kisses, and soon she was kicking like a field goal kicker as she grew stronger and bigger right under my heart. I started dilating three weeks early, so packed a bag with a picture to focus on, a timer, a phone numbers, PJs. We never got to use any of it. At 11.30 p.m. on my brother's birthday, bam! I heard a pop. Maybe I didn't hear it. I just felt it, like a cork coming out of a champagne bottle. The pains were regular and close. Because there was blood in the flood, we were told to get to the hospital. It was a wild and crazy trip. Being a first-time mom, I was not expected to be in advanced labor, but I was. Despite supreme efforts, I was only able to get her to crown. So I was given a saddle block so they could pull her with forceps. By 4.30 a.m. she was out. I had a huge tear that needed repair and my whole body was shaking so violently I thought I would fall off the gurney. But I was ecstatic. She was born on Good Friday and we took her home on Easter Sunday. Baby number two had her own story. Conceiving her was very difficult, and we were finally successful two and a half years later when, than we had hoped. She rode straight out in front and was much quieter than her sister. She was definitely a roller and made slow, deliberate turns. She is a quieter, go-with-the-flow kind of person, still. On her due date, 
Mom was at our house and not overseas, which was good thing because she recognized that I was in labor, no real pain, but regular tightening of my admit, ad, body part, abdomen. After a quick exam in his office, the doctor instructed us to get to the hospital and by no means let them break the water. The pain started for real as soon as we got over the Fremont Bridge. Within minutes of getting into the delivery room, the doctor said, no matter what, don't push until I say so. There was baby poop in the fluid, which can be very dangerous for a baby, and he needed the team on hand for her. While trying not to push, one pain was so strong that my vision started to go black, and I remember crying out, Mom! Just a very deep, primal scream. They whisked Katie away, saying, You have another girl. She seemed so very tiny. I heard her crying through my own sobs, and the nurse told me they wouldn't let her cry until she was safe. So those are the two deliveries, but I want to let you know what I have learned. Motherhood has been a profound joy and has taught me many things. I will fill you in on a few. One, normally I'm a pussycat, but I turn into a tiger to protect my young ones. Number two, when I looked into the face of my newborn babies, so much a part of me, something I made, I realized I actually love myself and my mom loves me the same way. Number three, I am most at peace when I'm in the presence of my children. I know them and they know me. This Mother's Day, they are both mothers too. To think really hard about how to approach this speaking assignment. Those of us who give birth generally don't speak too much about our stories in public. We sometimes tell each other in hushed tones over the heads of babies and children, but the deepest details are often kept in the vaults of our hearts. It's an interesting and vulnerable thought to stand or sit on my couch in front of everybody and tell what it took to bring my children into the world. My family of origin came together through adoption, foster care, and genetics. I'm the oldest of five children, and I was responsible for a lot of the child care and raising of my siblings. I always wanted children of my own. It never occurred to me that I wouldn't be a mother. My husband James and I waited several years to start our family, and then when we decided that we were ready, we ran into trouble. It took a long time for us to find success, and I guarded that first pregnancy fiercely through an early scare that we'd lost him, through months of 24-hour morning sickness, anemia, bed rest, and it was all worth it to me. Unfortunately, the doctor that I trusted didn't value my safety or my baby's safety the same way. My labor with Jimmy was long. <laughs> uh, my doctor insisted on an induction, and I trusted her, so I went along. 56 agonizing hours later, Jimmy was born by cesarean. I didn't see him for the first couple of hours because they were putting me back together. I lost so much blood. I was fainting and I needed a transfusion. My body has never been the same. And I would do it all over again a hundred times for that first moment when they finally put my perfect baby with his two dimples in my arms. And then I fell over, fainting lack of blood. <laughs> my recovery was really long and my perfect precious baby rarely ever slept, but he grew and he grew and being his mother gave me a purpose that I'd never found in anything else. Sorry, James. <laughs> um, two years later, we decided to try for a second baby. I thought it would take a long time, but uh, Miss Vivian is always in a hurry. As you know, you've met her and I was pregnant by the second month. I wanted so badly to try for a different birth experience. I worked with a different, absolutely wonderful doctor who took great care of me and of my baby. But in addition to being in a hurry, Vivi has always been a mommy's girl and she wasn't going anywhere without help. She was born by planned cesarean a couple of weeks after her due date. 
Her umbilical cord was wrapped twice around her neck and she had a beautiful head of red hair. The doctor put her right into James's arms and I was with her shortly after. I had another even longer recovery, this time with a toddler and a newborn. We had just joined the church a few months before, so I had more support this time around, but those early days were pretty rough uh, and I'd still do it all over again. It was absolutely worth it. Unfortunately, because of how my first birth was handled, it would not be safe for me to have another pregnancy after Vivi. Um, luckily for us, we knew that our family was complete. So eventually we were able to let go without too much anger or disappointment. Um, my own mother is a very difficult person. I love her deeply, but the example that she set is not one that I've chosen to follow as I mother my own children. Uh, as I look back over the last 14 years, giving birth feels like the easiest part. I came into this knowing the mechanics. I'd changed a million diapers. I'd sung a thousand lullabies. I'd fed and burped and bathed my siblings. I knew how to take care of the physical needs of the child, but mothering is so much more than that. It's seeing to the moment by moment emotional and spiritual needs of human beings who, while they are whole unto themselves, they are vulnerable. It's a million billion decisions every day. It's usually putting myself dead last, being exhausted and worried, second guessing myself and hoping that the pain that they encounter will pass and the wonder in their eyes will stay. It's constant, it's never ending, <laughs> it's nonstop. And I do it all over again, a hundred times. I do want to read you, sorry, it's also emotional. <laughs> I want to read you um, a poem that kind of is my guiding star. What's well, not a poem, it's Khalil Jabon <laughs> on children. And a woman who held a babe against her bosom said, speak to us of children. And he said, your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. For life goes not backward nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. The archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite and he bends you with his might that his arrows may go swift and far. Let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness for even as he loves the arrow that flies, so he loves also the bow that is stable. Awe and respect of the poem that Geneva just read because I am finding that being a parent of adult children is um, hard in a different way than being a parent of small children. <laughs> and the image of the bow sending the arrow out into the world is, um, is, is so appropriate. I want to recognize that Mother's Day is really difficult for a lot of people. Um, there are myriad ways to become a mother and um, I just need to acknowledge that this isn't the happy flowers sunshine day for a lot of people and yet um, as we talk today about the physicalness of of birthing a child, um, there, is, there is universal in that. And that was the feeling that I had when I first learned I was pregnant. And um, I remember coming home from the midwife's office after having her confirm that I was pregnant. And, and um, I knew 
I did not want to be medically managed. And so I birthed both of my children at home. And my first pregnancy, I was finishing up my bachelor's degree. And I remember walking around campus with with this baby in my tummy. <laughs> we didn't call it a baby bump then, but I had my round baby belly and and my feet felt more grounded in the earth during that time. My awareness of having this child growing in me connected me to every other being that had given birth. And when I would see ancient fertility symbols, I saw myself in them with, with heavy breasts and heavy bellies, knowing that I was connected to the ancients who had done this act of, of bearing a child. And that pregnancy, I led very much with my head. Um, like Susan, I, I had my plan and I envisioned how it would be. And, um, and it, Dan's birth turned into chaos. Um, but he was born and he was safe and and um and then I was completely overwhelmed with the difference of having this baby than planning and thinking about what it would be to have a baby. It was tough. And so when I became pregnant with my second child, part of me said, Oh shoot, you know what's coming now. And her birth was so different. Um, as I led, as I led with my heart and let my body do what it is supposed to do and what it knows how to do, because it is part of every other being that has given birth. And I sat in my recliner and I I felt my stomach tighten and I I felt the muscles of the uterus pulling my cervix open and I, I could feel it stretching. And it's not as poetic as it sounded because it sounded like there was a red hot poker causing that opening. But I could feel my body working so hard. And I remember um, just laboring and and um, and breathing. And my mother said to me, the baby's trying to get out too, Terry. And it shifted my perception into, into this anonymous baby was a human being working hard to come into the world as I was hurt, working hard to bring it into the world. And certain that this child was a boy, I birthed it and laid back with my eyes closed and the midwife said do you want to know what it is and i said no I, it's andrew and it wasn't until they told me it was a girl that i opened my eyes and said oh it's amelia and it was a delightful experience to hold that child in my arms and then later that day to see my three-year-old sitting on the bed reading a book to his brand new sister and again, I felt connected to so much. And now in my work as, um, as a hospice chaplain, I have sat with people who are doing their dying. And I have found that dying has stages of labor, just like birthing. And there were so many times I thought I'd go back to school and be a midwife. And, and now I find myself in ministry being a midwife and helping people through their transition and their active labor, labor of dying and, and the imminence of their deaths. And it is as sacred a birth as giving life. And the connection that we have with one another through these miraculous physical rituals is profound. And I just simply don't know how to end that. So um, the end.
the end. Our dear friends, our our dear mothers, I I from with my whole heart and from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of the congregation, I thank you so much for sharing your stories, for being willing to be vulnerable. Your stories are sacred, holy, and divine, and more powerful than a hundred mothers more powerful than any uh, Mother's Day sermon. Uh, because in your stories, we see the wisdom and love of God enfleshed for us. And in your stories, we catch a glimpse and in your laboring and in your loving and in your embodied wisdom, we get a glimpse of the Great Mother, the source of life. We get a glimpse of what Julian of Norwich called Christ the Mother, uh, the mother of all life and the source of us all. So thank you on this Mother's Day. We say thank you. Thank you for mothering. Thank you for your laboring. Thank you for your tears. Thank you for your hearts and let us all be inspired to be mothers as well. Amen. As our, as our mothers labor us into being as they love us into loving, laugh us into laughing, and dance us into dancing. We also nurture, we together nurture the church as the beloved community into being. Uh, we, we together as the body of Christ in the world, we practice support for each other in order to make this a community that explains the blessings and love of, of Jesus to the world around us. So with that in mind, I invite us now to give forth our offerings to support the life and ministry of this church, this beloved community, as we hear some special music. And so I, I will write the address for the church and please write your checks and mail them into the church as though this were the time in the service when you would drop your offering in the offering plate. Uh, and this will this will help us to continue to be the beloved community that we are uh, for, for each other and for the community around us.
Mother of life, wisdom enfleshed, and sacred spirit, send your blessing down on these gifts and on each one of us that we might all labor together to bring a new world into being, that together we might give birth to a greater love for this world and transform it together. In the name of Christ, we ask for these blessings this day and every day. Amen. No matter who, no matter what, no matter where you are on the journey of life, you're welcome, welcome in this place. No matter who, no matter what, no matter where you are on the journey of life, accepted, welcome by God's grace. For we are family. To be purpose for eternity, born in love from above, God's community. No matter who, no matter what, no matter where you are on the journey of life, you're welcome, welcome in this place. No matter who, no matter what, no matter where you are. Welcome, welcome 
friends, we are born in that love and sent out in that grace. And so as our service ends, let us remember that we go out in the blessing of the Creator and the Christ and the Holy Spirit. We go out in that life. And so may you love God so much, you love nothing else too much. And may you fear her just enough, you need fear nothing else at all. Go in love. Amen.